I decided to house sit my wealthy neighbor's house. They told me that I could get $100 for spending one week at the house. As a 14 year old boy, this was the jackpot, the monopoly. I begged my mom to drop me off. She finally agreed after days of pestering. She dropped me off there on Monday night. It was a hot summer, but luckily the moon shone bright with the sea breeze in the air. I live in a more rural neighborhood, so we had to drive a few blocks to my neighbor's house. When we arrived, I stepped out of the car and observed the manor which I would be staying at. The stone foundation led up to the glossy dark wood building. The whole house looked like a mountain in the evening sky. This would be the house that you could hear the floors creak and the walls breathe. I walked up to the front of the house and noticed a note taped to the front door. I removed it from the wooden surface and began to read. Dear Matthew, thank you for house sitting for us this week. While staying in our home, please feel free to eat anything in the fridge. The guest bedroom has been set up for your stay. The TV is available for you as well. The main reason we left you this note was because of the rule in our house. The basement is being renovated, so we ask that you not go down there during your stay. Please remember that this is an old establishment, so any noises you hear are just creaks and moans of the house. I hope you feel happy and stay safe in our home. If you have any questions, please call my phone number. Sincerely, Mr. and Mrs. Bauer. I put the note into my pocket and opened the front door. The inside walkway was dimly lit. The hallway led down into the kitchen and dining room. The dining room was a lot quainter than I had expected. Just a few chairs with a long wooden board that served as a table. The kitchen was connected with granite countertops and a sink in the middle. It was getting late, so I decided to check the fridge for food. They had completely stocked up on everything. Milk and cheese with soda and meat. They had cake with ice cream in the freezer. I decided to take it easy tonight and pulled out the bread and peanut butter. I sat down with a glass of coke and ate silently. The house let out a soft moan as it too settled in for the night. I checked out the guest bedroom and got dressed for bed. I brushed my teeth in the bathroom, then laid down in the silk sheets and turned out the lights. The air conditioning kicked in and soon I fell asleep. I woke up the next morning and once again checked the fridge. The milk was gone. I thought it was weird and checked for something else. I ended up finishing breakfast and decided to check out the rest of the house. Bang. I froze immediately as I spun around. The sound came from the hallway. I started to walk down it when I saw it. The basement door. I approached it carefully, silently shifting my feet down the corridor. Bang. The whole door shook. The doorknob rattled like someone was frantically trying to get it open. I moved closer and closer to the mysterious basement. I wondered if they had a dog or something they were keeping down there. Whatever was behind that door did not sound human. I pressed my ear against the wooden tomb and listened to what was on the other end. I heard screams, agonizing screams. I practically jumped away from the door as the noises continued, echoing all throughout the house. That's when something clicked, and it all went silent once again. I stood confused, with my back against the wall. I once again approached the door. I laid my hand against it and delicately felt around the wood for some sort of speaker. It may have seemed dumb at the time. 
but I thought I was being pranked, like in those videos. But as you can guess, no hollow spot for a speaker. That's when the doorknob began to turn. I almost passed out right then and there. I shot my hand down and wrapped it around the doorknob. The damn thing kept on turning and then came the creak. This was an old house so I expected the doors to make creaks and groans. This door opened up and I gazed inside. An ugly, horrifying beast that resembled a humanoid figure. I slammed the door shut and dragged a chair to block the entrance. I bolted to the bedroom and shut the door. A couple of minutes passed before I called my neighbors. Hey Matthew, is everything okay at the house? Yeah, everything's fine, but... Uh, something weird happened? Weird how? Well, your basement door opened and I clo- What? I said your basement door opened and... The basement door is open? Did you close it? Yeah, I closed it, but there was something weird down there. A slight pause from the neighbors caused a wave of uneasiness to pass through me. What did you see down there? Not much, I just saw a weird human-like figure down there. Do you have like mannequins or something down there? Did it see you? Uh, no, I don't think so. Keep that basement door locked. If anything else happens, call me immediately. We are on our way home. The call disconnected, which left me confused and frightened. I ran back to the basement door and made sure it was locked. I wasn't just going to lock a bolt. I dragged chairs and tables over to block it. I made sure the door wouldn't budge. I stayed up for most of the night and listened intently for the slightest creak. That's when I heard it. Footsteps. They started very light at first, before they became heavier and louder. I realized they were getting closer. I slid out of bed and walked towards the door. I wasn't going to stand in my room and be cornered like an idiot. The pale moonlight shone through the bedroom window and was my only source of light. The shadows danced around, taunting me. I grabbed the doorknob and slowly began to creak it open. The footsteps slowed to a stop. I counted to three in what was a quiet whisper. When I reached zero, I threw the door open and charged down the hall. The beast stood there, staring right at me. Without losing a second, I tore down the hall and ducked under the monster. It grabbed my leg and let out a high-pitched scream. I kicked frantically before it finally let me go. I ran for the front door and got it open before it dragged me back in. I drove my fingernails into the hardwood floor. The scratching noise had no effect on the creature as it continued to drag me down. I got a good look at the thing while being pulled away. It resembled a human, but taller, skinnier torso like it hadn't eaten in forever. It had jagged teeth that were faded with pure black. Its eyes were the color of nothingness, a lonely, hollow socket that filled the void. Its limbs were disjointed and bruised. It had long fingers on each hand. Nails that appeared as if they were submerged in cement. It was an empty husk of a human. The monster dragged me all the way down into the basement, gurgling and moaning as it continued to slide my body across the floor. Then it stopped. I sat up and there was nothing there. When I turned around, I saw a limp and lifeless body in the corner. I scrambled away from the wall and saw blood. Blood was splashed all over the wall. When I looked closer, I noticed it spelled out something. It resembled something you'd see out of a cop show. CSI level stuff. I made out the words, 
one by one, until I got the phrase, they are the real monsters. I stepped away from the wall when something rose from behind me. It leaned closer and spoke something in barely a whisper. Get out. I froze, carefully deciding what I should do next. I slowly turned around expecting that thing to be back there. It wasn't. That's when the doorbell rang. The chime rang all throughout the house and it silenced any other noise. I slowly ascended the stairs, piecing together what the writing could mean. The second chime came through and rang louder than the first. Whoever was on the other end was impatient. I approached the front door, hands shaking violently. I wrapped my cold, bruised hand around the golden knob. I opened it up and there stood my neighbors. Their smiles were wide. They barged in past me, straight down to the basement door. They spoke no words. Upon spotting the basement door unlocked and open, they spun around and approached me. I backed away from their sinister approach before I opened my mouth. I think I should leave now, I croaked. They looked at me for a moment before they both said, no, stay a while. The way they said it in a deadpan tone freaked me out. That's when Mr. Bauer swiped at me with a knife. I barely evaded the attack and rolled towards the kitchen. Come on, Matthew, we will make you beautiful. That's when I saw the basement door. I came up with a plan and began sprinting towards the basement door. Miss Bauer stepped in front of me, but I quickly smacked her in the face. She let out an awful scream before running after me. I swung open the door and descended down the stairs. Two pairs of footsteps followed me. The monster suddenly appeared. It stood next to me and glanced at my pursuers. They both screamed as the creature ran towards them. I ran up the stairs, looking behind me. This was an awful decision. The monster rammed Miss Bauer into the wall. Mr. Bauer tried to pull it off of his wife. The beast snatched him up and shoved him straight into his jaw. I heard the bones crunching as I ran through the front door. I never stopped running until I got back to my house. I told my parents what happened and a police investigation was launched at the manor. They didn't find any bodies or the monster. In fact, there was no house at all. It just up and disappeared. I still try to forget this story, but I never can. That's because every time I drive by that empty lot, I hear the sickened screams of both my neighbors. They definitely deserved it for being crazy, but sometimes I wonder if they really did suffer a fate worse than death.